Richards channel where you always learn a multitude of key concepts to improve your painting skills. Thing right here that easy for the left brain to take over. The wing actually looks a little thicker from top to bottom, a little wider out here on the end of the wing than it does right here. Um, don't ask me why, but it's something to do with the shape of the wing. It's actually a little thinner right there. So I'm going to make it nice and dark. Where it's thicker. And I'm going to darken it up a little bit on the belly of the plane because that's the underside of the plane. And that is where the shadow, it, it has a core shadow under the plane. Now, one thing I noticed the wheel that's sticking out. Um, I don't think I have it at exactly the correct angle and I don't have it standing out farther enough from the plane itself. I'm going to put this other wheel in in just a second here. And notice that that is an oval. It is not a circle because we're seeing the wheel from the side. So if I want to fix this other wheel that's not sticking out far enough, if this paint is still wet, and you can do this with oil paint for quite a while. Look, I just added a little bit of solvent on there. I'm washing the paint off the canvas because that white paint, that's from a couple of weeks ago. And in this area where I noticed that the wing is actually thinner in this area, I'm going to extract off there. See if we can get that shape a little bit more correct. That looks better already. I like that. Let's throw in that uh, wheel sticking out there. You notice I'm using a fairly good sized brush, but you can use the corner of the brush. And put in some real detail stuff. Just place in that axle or whatever you call it that holds the wheel out there. I'm not painting it in, I'm applying it. Greg, is that black right out of the tube? Uh, no, this is um, a burnt sienna mm -hmm. and a French ultramarine blue together. Okay. Okay. And this back wing, I don't have it quite long enough. I can apply that. Now if, um, if I noticed that this was wrong and that paint had already dried, I could be using white paint around the outside of this. To cover over that messed up area. Instead of extracting it off. This wing right here, I don't think it's long enough. And it's not quite at the right angle, so I just extracted the bottom of that wing to make it the correct angle. The whole thing, the wing all the way across, was correct. So I may have to shorten this wing a little bit, let's see. 
It looks okay. Put this in the plane to the end of the wing. Okay, it was it was actually pretty close, but um, I'm going to add just a little bit. Just a little bit to the end of that wing. And then there's one more thing I'd like to kind of do. I'm going to use some French ultramarine blue with some white and get a lighter color of blue. Now it's going to be a middle tone. It's not going to be light. So I got that too light. Because um, on the side of the plane, there is a little bit of a middle tone color out towards the front of it, the nose of the plane, up towards the top. And that back wing, I have no idea what that back wing is called. Yeah, I guess maybe it's uh, called that, but there's like a, a wing that sticks up like a fin, like a shark fin, and then there's two little wings that go out to the side off of the mm -hmm. tail, and I don't know what the difference is for each of those. Now, I'm going to extract a little bit to kind of make this the right mm -hmm. shape. And you notice there's a little bit of um, sky showing through there. So you're looking at that negative space. And if you pay attention to that negative space, it'll help you get the shape of the plane more correct. So see, I'm able to kind of carve some of this out by doing extracting instead of just drawing it in. And then I noticed one other little thing, is there's like these little supports that hold the wing up, and they're just little bitty thin lines. And I'm going to show you how to make little thin lines like that. I'm going to take some dark paint. And I'm going to lay it out flat so that it's kind of thin and flat. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to push up on this and I'm going to look at the end of my uh, bristles. And when I see the paint start rolling up on the end, just beginning to roll up on the end, then I would know that I have this like little consistent bead that's not very thick, right on the end of the bristles. And then what I can do is just touch it. I'm not going to try to paint it in like this. I'm going to just touch it. that little thin line that way. If you tried to paint it in, there's no way it would spread the bristles and then it would leave a thick line. You don't want to leave a thick line there. And, and that might still even be a little too thick. And what I can do is go back and extract off to the side of it.
better than it did when we first started. Now you can keep fiddling and fiddling, you know, forever. Um, but there's how you do it. Okay. Okay. So everybody can uh, start painting. If you're finished with this one already, um, we have a file that you can pick something out to, to get started on if you'd like. Okay. All right. Oh my uh, it, 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 she was right, though, because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it... Well, it makes it look cartoonish. You might have a great background, and then you have your cartoon birds. And that's what I'm really afraid of with my airplane, is that I like my canvas so far, but if I put in, you know, like on the finger, the drawing, mm -hmm. if that stinks, then it, it will look more cartoonish yeah. and amateurish. Well, um, this one right here is really quite like it. That one's quite like it. This one, the tire is sticking out just the way that it yeah. ought to. Okay. Um, you'll notice the shape of your tires are more circular. This one's a little more uh, oval. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that it, it because of the angle we're seeing the airplane from, it appears oval shaped. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. Um, but all of them have. I, I mean, any one of these is, is a pretty good airplane. Start, at least you a know? start on mm -hmm. the airplane. So, it, yeah, if you were to paint this onto your canvas, any one of these, then go back and tweak it the way that you saw me doing today. And, um, you know, you, you can hone it in and hone it in. And, you know, if you take too much paint off, like you're extracting, you take too much paint off, you just add some paint really back on there, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. keep working it back and forth. It's actually better than like that when you're doing a drawing in a sense because when you do a drawing um, and you start erasing, the pencil eraser gets all dirty on the page lots of times. And, uh, you know, if you're extracting, it comes off real nice and smooth, so you never have that drawing. About this. I have some of these. Um, and then I'll realize, look where the See, now I'm using water. Is, like, right. water. Yes. And then I Takes had some of these, and they are water. Mm -hmm. So, so I kind of what I did, I took a, I took this black one to start the drawing, and then I painted mm -hmm. on top of it. I wonder if that would show up, or if maybe that's just not the way to go. I, I think if it were me and I was trying to, to get something initially on there that I felt good about, I would do it with charcoal instead of something like this. Because, I, well, I don't know. This may extract right back off well. I don't, I don't think it does. I think what, if it does anything, it gets covered up. You know. It's sort of like a magic marker. It's yes. got a, you know, I don't yeah, know. So I'm not if, sure about if it. If you're putting a magic marker on there and you decide, oops, that's the wrong angle, it's or it's a little too off. fat, it's not, it's not coming, coming off. off so, yeah. but if if you put paint on there, then you can extract that's it right true. back off. So you you can keep manipulating it over and over again. You know, it took me in a few minutes. The to get it pretty much the way that I wanted it. Flexible. But, mm -hmm. you know, say so, you had a day and like you're just really now, struggling you draw something with and a magic marker, you just keep that's it. You can't messing up, it. messing right. up, yeah. you know, uh, but you're staying after paints, it. You can mm -hmm. just move you, them around. You extract keep, off, add a little more in, changing extract things, off, add a little more in. You just keep it up. You can keep doing it forever, you know, until you really feel satisfied. All right, well, what's your opinion? What if I went, what if I tried to go with birds? I think the airplane's the way to go. Okay. That's yeah. all I need to hear. I need to yeah. push. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you've already got your runway. Well, that's true. Yeah. But I thought it'd be kind of ironic that the birds are flying in. You know? uh, 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 <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah. Well, I had to redo my bushes. I had two twins. I thought about what you said. I had two bushes that looked just alike. Yes. Uh -huh. So I went in and tried to make them more spindly because they were just round bushes. Uh -huh. And then I thought, well, I'll add one. And I made him taller and tried to cut him down a little bit. Yep. But in the meantime, I, my, I turned my water more purple again. Uh huh. And I was listening to your lesson. I, now I know I would need to take yellow mm -hmm. to neutralize it a little more. 
Yes, you could do a wash, mm -hmm. a glaze of yellow um, over top of that, neutralize it right out. I um, think I need that, don't you? I don't know. I think it's kind of pretty like that. Well, what about here? Like, as I was trying to drag it up, I feel like I lost the shore line. Uh huh. Uh, Maybe add a little dark in here or something? You, you can. Um, I, I, I've gone back and forth with my own painting mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll uh, bring in the light lights and I'll realize, oh, I lost my shadows too much. Mm -hmm. And then I'd work a little shadow back into it and I'd be like, oh, I went a little too far with the <laughs> shadow. That's, so, you know. that's what I'm doing with the water. It's like, uh -huh. oh, here, I need to add a little of this. And the yep. next thing I know, I had purple super purple water. You'll find with these paintings where um, they're very soft edges that um, you're not quite sure how far in a particular direction that you want to go with change-ups. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's easy to push it a little too far. And so you keep working back and forth, back and forth until you get it where you're comfortable. Where That's you, a natural you feel progression. Like huh? It is. The, the only thing is, I'll caution you this, that if there's an area that you like it, you're like, okay, I'm satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to also start incorporating whatever changes you make and do it to that area that you like. Oh, yeah, as you're going, you just... And then you yeah. end up losing it. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I like on my painting this water line right in through here. Um, it has a, a really nice sense of that there's uh, wet water and reflection, light yes. reflection yeah. on the water right in that area. So whatever I do, I don't want to don't touch that. Don't go near area. that. Yeah. Um, well, now here I could do what you were saying, put that orangey mm -hmm. color somewhere, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, maybe that is a little... You like, already did it intuitively a little bit, yeah. But, and I was thinking here, like I was trying to keep it light, thinking mm -hmm. about the light, but I mean, yeah. I could put some uh, around here and that would be good. Yeah. I may not do too much, I may not do anything with this today. I let mm -hmm. it, like you say, sit on my easel at home. Yeah. And, you know, think about it. The, the, that's something that uh, I would suggest for any painting that you feel like you're finished with it. Go ahead and, and uh, leave it sit out somewhere. Because there'll be something you're not seeing, and um, and you won't know it until you've gotten so familiar with seeing it that you stop really paying attention to it anymore. And then all of a sudden you'll walk in I'll one day it. and it's like being, oh wow, how did I ever miss that? You know? Well, I'll have to say your lesson last week was really what I needed because when I put this airplane on, you know, I made the wings just way too thick. Mm -hmm. But remember, last week you were showing us how to extract, extract, mm -hmm. extract, mm -hmm. and I extracted the wings, uh, you don't even know how many times. Mm -hmm. I think if you hadn't had that lesson, I would have just been totally freaked out. I would have been like taking white and painting over it and everything, but uh -huh. it was just so easy to yeah, extract, just extract it. it all. Yeah. So that, you know, it's funny how lessons seem to come at the right time. Oh, good. Well, that's great. Um, but one thing I'll say about the plane is these are gray grays, and I don't know. Um, it's kind of blue, isn't it? It's, it's more bluish. Mm -hmm. It is neutralized, for sure. So it is in that grayish direction. But you can do the same thing. We are just talking about doing like a little glaze in here to neutralize that you can do a little glaze that defeats the neutralization. So you can uh, use a little glaze of uh, high chroma blue, and you don't have to, you know, like ordinarily if you're glazing, you're glazing an area lots of times. Mm -hmm. But you can glaze little lines, you know. Oh, you can okay. just do yeah. like little uh -huh. bitty sections, you know, okay. um, just where you want it at. And uh, so you could kind of bring some of that um, uh, high chroma back, okay. you know, um, even though it's a kind of a middle of the road uh, value, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not real light color, it, it's a very middle tone, um, but it may be a little bit more um, intensity to that color, so it, it's, uh, you know, a little higher chroma, uh, a little more blue yeah. also, yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, chroma and 
color is two different things. So the um, intensity of the color or the color of the color. When we say hue, we're talking about the color of the color. So uh, blue would be the color or a light blue. Um, the intensity of it would be, you know, pretty much straight out of the tube with a little bit of white in it. Blue might take you that direction. And then you just kind of water it down, you know, and add it on. And if it doesn't come out as intense as you want it to be, let it dry thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And then go back and do the same thing again. And, and those successive layers of glaze, it will eventually get to where it's exactly what you want. Yeah. Which blue would you go with? The ultra marine? Mm -hmm. That's your yeah. go-to. Uh, well, it depends. Like, um, you know, what I was just telling Sally is when you're mixing a color, the first thing you want to think about when you're color mixing is the value of the color. How light or how dark is it? So, um, it, you know, French ultramarine blue, very dark, dark. Mm -hmm. um, and you can add white to it to lighten it up and it'll get, it gets a real nice intensity to that, the light blue that's created from that. But if it's a very light blue, you may want to go with a different blue, so a lighter blue. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just depends. Yeah, yeah. The French ultramarine blue is a really nice color. I think I like to use it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'll set it aside. I'll take it home and okay. set it aside. I'll start something new today. Okay. Gotcha. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you're getting a lot of value out of all of these videos that we're posting on the artist Craig Richards channel. Um, you know, there's all kinds of how-tos, there's the weekly paint class, uh, and there's occasional outings like uh, going out in plain air somewhere. We're going to be going down the Yadkin River in the spring, uh, going to museums, things like that. I think you'd enjoy those. Um, if you're getting value out of these, then uh, do the, uh, like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, you have to subscribe in order to be able to hit the notification bell, and that's for you. Um, the reason I'm saying that is so that uh, you know when the next paint class is coming out, so that if you're working on a painting and we're doing it again the next week, the, you can follow along with us. And leave us comments, you know, not just for me, but for the students as well. Say, you know, Deb, you did a great painting, Kitty, you did a great painting, or Craig, you did a great demonstration this week. Um, that builds us up, and we want to build you up as well. We want to help you to keep painting and keep growing. You're doing great. Uh, don't tell yourself you're not. Um, you are doing wonderful. Just keep at it and you'll learn and grow each week with us. So, happy painting. Okay.